Hi everyone. This is a compilation video of all the jokes that I came up with about drinking or alcohol or bars. It's all about booze. If you enjoy it, please hit subscribe. Maybe share it with somebody who enjoys the booze. I'm going to be posting a new video every day during the pandemic, so if you want to see more, hit subscribe. And I don't know why this is all flabby down here. I'm an old man. Anyway, I love you. I, uh, I am single, I don't drink. It's kinda, it's kinda hard to get a woman buzz when you don't drink. You'll be like, uh, yeah, I'll have a glass of water and uh, you want a shot of Jaeger? <laughs> you want eight of them? Uh -huh. When you don't drink, people always need to know why, too. They're like, you don't drink? Why? <laughs> this never happens with anything else. You don't use mayonnaise? Why? <laughs> Are you addicted to mayonnaise? <laughs> Is it okay if I use mayonnaise? <laughs> I could go outside. I love our holiday traditions, like the Christmas tree, where we go out and we chop down a tree and we put it in our living room. Kind of sounds like the behavior of a drunk man, really. <laughs> Some woman wakes up. Honey, why is there a, a pine tree? in our living room. I like it. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna decorate it for Jesus. Uh, yeah. and, and then I'm gonna hang my socks over the fireplace. <laughs> Fill them with candy. Maybe I'll tie some leaves to the ceiling, see if I can get some action. But now nah, I gotta puke on that couch. Merry Christmas. My favorite gift I've ever received is a flask. I think giving someone a flask is a nice way of saying, hey, you seem like a drunk on the go. You strike me as needing hard liquor at all times. This would be good for you in your car. Don't you love how we have different containers that we drink different alcohol out of? Like, you ever try and drink wine out of anything but a wine glass? You feel like a drunk. <laughs> hey, can you refill my Yahtzee shaker? <laughs> Hit the sippy cup too, will you, Donka? <laughs> so much formality with wine. Like that wine menu. Does anyone really know what they're looking at when they look at a wine menu? Because if you do, you're an alcoholic. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I had three of these for breakfast. I always make the mistake of asking for the waiter's suggestion. You know, so that wine would compliment your meal. Yeah, I'm going to go with a $5 bottle. That compliments my wallet. I stayed at my brother's place for a while. He has a bar in his house, which is cool, but how do you have a bar in your house and not admit you have a little bit of a drinking problem? I'm not an alcoholic. I just need a room dedicated to booze. Here's where I watch TV, here's where we eat. I get tanked over here. <laughs> I got a porn closet in the back. <laughs> Crack dance downstairs. Is he drunk? I think he's drunk. <laughs> I see some of you are drinking, that's not the answer. <laughs> it's not eating is. It's amazing how our attitude on alcohol changes, right? Because even as a teenager, you know it's wrong. You're like, you know, I don't like the taste of it, but I want to look cool. And then in your 20s, you're like, you know what? This kind of gives me confidence to talk to the opposite sex. And then in your 40s, you're like, you know what? This is the only thing I like about being alive. <laughs> <laughs> it's only funny because it's true. <laughs> I'm sure some of you are going to go to some bars, head to a bar, right? Yeah. I never really feel comfortable right when I get in a bar. I'm always kind of like, who are all these strangers? But after a couple of beers, I'm like, these guys are probably my best friends. Because <laughs> your experience in a bar changes over the course of the night, right? As the night goes on, you see really why we go to bars. We go to bars so we can behave like children. Toddlers, really. You ever go to a bar at 2 a.m.? You might as well be picking up a kid at nursery school. <laughs> it's the same experience. The behavior's the same in both places. Both places, there's always some strange yelling for no reason at all, you know? <laughs> 
Both places you go in the bathroom, it's obvious not everyone's potty trained. <laughs> Both places, there's always someone crying. She was my best friend, <laughs> but not anymore. Both places, occasionally there's a fight. You know, he was standing where I wanted to stand. <laughs> so I punched him in the head. <laughs> I need more juice. But at 2 a.m., people are drunk in bars. I love how we're always surprised when someone's drunk in a bar. We're actually shocked. We're like, look at that guy. He's wasted in a bar. I came here to read a novel. Mostly the people that are drunk in bars are drunk because they're drinking shots. And really the only time to ever drink a shot is never. No one's ever drank a shot and then done something they're proud of. Oh, I got wasted last night, and then I went out and built some low-income housing. <laughs> that never happens. You always wake up the next day, and you're like, I need a new identity. <laughs> Maybe two of them. Because if you're drinking shots, it's either your birthday or you're trying to forget you were ever born. <laughs> there is something honest about a shot. It's like, I want to get right to the embarrassing part of the night. <laughs> right to pants off. But we don't even drink shots. We take them like they're medicine. This will cure my normal behavior. <laughs> Everyone acts like we're in a Western. Whoa, 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 whoa. That'll give me the courage to confront this plate of nachos. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Strangers will buy you a shot. Your brother, hey, I don't know you. Let me buy a shot. This never happens with anything else. Hey, what do you see, you and me? Let's do some appetizers. <laughs> Jalapeno poppers, mano a mano. <laughs> you gotta turn that shot down before they get it poured, because once it's poured, they act like you're rejecting a sweater they crocheted you. <laughs> you know how hard I worked on this? You didn't at all. <laughs> but I don't mind the bars. Unless they're really crowded, you know, like five or six people deep at the bar, everyone's competing for the bartender's attention. We look like we're trying to get disaster relief from the Red Cross. So I... <laughs> I need mine more than he needs his. <laughs> I can never get the bartender's attention. I'm always like, you try and make eye contact. Right? <laughs> Show him you have money. I have cash. <laughs> but you can't try too hard in a crowded bar. You have to act how cool you have to be like, I don't even care if I get served. I just like standing in crowded, uncomfortable places. <laughs> Later on, I'm gonna swing by the airport, see what that TSA line's like. I like the lines. Never enough bartenders in a crowded bar. Those bartenders look like they're in the middle of a triage unit. They're like, give me 40 cc's or something. <laughs> Never enough bartenders. You ever get faked out by the arrival of a bar back? You're like, finally, another bar. It's a bar back. <laughs> and those poor bar backs, they always act like they're not qualified to serve you. Like, oh, no, 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 no. I can carry 12 cases up a narrow staircase, but handing you a beer, not yet. I'm still learning from the master. Because in a crowded bar, the bartender is the master, right? All the authority goes to that. Some of them act like they're not even obligated to serve you. They're like, I don't know, I don't know what I'm going to do with all this booze. Maybe I'll just pour it out and make a puddle. <laughs> and we fall for it. We're like, well, it's either deal with this guy or make it in our bathtub at home. <laughs> Damn prohibition. There's male and female bartenders. Female bartenders, they always seem a little tougher than they need to be, right? I don't want to say bitchy, because that would describe them perfectly. <laughs> Not all of them. Some female bartenders definitely go off that vibe, like, don't hit on me, treat me with respect, and don't be distracted by the fact I'm wearing a bikini. <laughs> okay, honey. They always call you honey like they're your grandma or something. What can I get you, honey? I don't know, a birthday card with $2 in it? Uh, <laughs> Maybe a beer if you're not too busy condescending me. <laughs> but if you've been to a bar, you've probably been to a filthy public restroom. We've all been in those bars where you're like, no, oh, wow, well, now I know why they serve alcohol here. <laughs> and when I'm talking about uh, the filthy bathroom, I'm talking about the men's room. I don't know about the ladies' room. I haven't been in there in like a week. <laughs> but the men's room, I don't know what happens to guys when we go into a public restroom. Some anger comes out. <laughs> Some of the stuff that's written on the walls? 
You never have a friend admit it, like, hey, give me a second, I gotta pee and draw a swastika, I'll be right back. <laughs> There's guys writing things on the walls, and then there are the guys that reply. <laughs> Some guy write, this place sucks, another guy write, no, you suck. <laughs> As if that first guy is ever gonna see that. <laughs> like he's gathering up his friends, well, this is what I wrote on this. Hey, wait a minute! <laughs> that guy said I suck! You double suck. <laughs> but all public restrooms, even when you go, even at fancy places, you ever go in the, the restroom and there's a bathroom attendant? Aren't you always like, oh no, <laughs> call me a loner, but if there's one thing I don't want anyone attending, <laughs> it's when I'm using the restroom, <laughs> let alone someone sticking around to sell me a paper towel. <laughs> They don't sell it, they always wave it at you like, here, you don't have to tip me, you can just have bad luck the rest of your life. <laughs> and you have to tip the bathroom attendant. You can't justify not tipping. You can't be like, ah, he doesn't need it. He's just working next to a toilet. <laughs> you have to tip the bathroom attendant. Sometimes the bathroom attendant will have an incentive for a tip. They'll have like gum and cologne on a shelf. And, no thanks on the gum. I'm sure a lot of that flavor's probably been knocked away here in your office. <laughs> Where'd you get the gum? Bathroom. Yeah, some stranger in a half a tuck sold it to me. <laughs> what flavor is it, bathroom? <laughs> and the cologne, you know, talk about a place you don't want to pick up a scent. <laughs> well, you smell different. Bathroom again. <laughs> Some guy had a jug of liquid sitting on a shelf. I just sprayed myself. <laughs> Good guy, I'm moving in with him. <laughs> of course, Canada's the home of the uh, Caesar cocktail. The Caesar cocktail, you're very proud of that. Which is, uh, Caesar is kind of like a Bloody Mary, but with clam juice. Clam juice, wow, I didn't know that was an ingredient. <laughs> or a liquid. <laughs> you know that thing from the ocean that looks like a snack? What if we made it into a juice? <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> Say you just, you just went jogging, all right? You're parched, you're thirsty. I hand you a tall glass of clam juice. <laughs> you chug it. <laughs> and then we're ready to go to the club. <laughs> he has never met a Canadian before. <laughs> It has nothing to do with... The Caesar was created in Calgary, landlocked Calgary, which has the finest clams. <laughs> the... I just love how you guys, how Canadians, like, complain about the Bloody Mary. You're like, oh, the Bloody Mary. Oh, oh, oh that's so disgusting. That drink that doesn't have clam juice in it. Oh, oh. Uh, 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 uh. I like beer. This may not surprise you by looking at me. I am an overweight American male in my early 40s. All right, late 40s. All right, let's just say I'm an overweight American male who likes beer. Not just any beer. I like a quality beer that can help me forget that I'm well not in my early 40s. A beer preference is personal. At family reunions, my brothers will always make fun of me for liking fancy beer. Jimmy and his fancy beer. As far as I can tell, what makes my beer preference fancy to my brothers is that it requires a bottle opener. But I'm aware my beer palate is anything but complex. Now it seems every city, town, and hamlet I visit has its own beer made by locals, specialty beers, micro beers, craft beers made by community artisans. And I can tell you without exception, they're all bad. Hi, thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you want. If you want to see more stand up, I have more stand up, or if you want to see an original show like Let's Get Cooking or The Mike and Pat Show, 
that's available on my channel, but also just know that I'll be posting a new video every day during this pandemic or until the world ends. Please hit subscribe and turn on your alert or notification button.